Today AMD is launching the Radeon RX 5600 XT based on the same chip as the 5700 with the same 36 compute units but with a lower power target which gives it a boost clock of 1560 MHz stock which is about 200 MHz lower than the 5700. Curiously we're seeing a 6 GB Radeon GPU for the first time which seems a bit odd to me considering that the lower tier 5500 XT comes in an 8 GB variant. The 5600 XT does have more bandwidth and the memory used is GDDR6 but it would have been nice to see the full 8 GB of memory included at this price point. According to the Steam hardware survey, 60% of gamers are still playing at 1080p and AMD is keen to point out that over 20 million monitors shipped in the last 4 years were 1080p. So AMD are positioning the 5600 XT SD Ultimate 1080p Gaming GPU. <laughs> to be honest, if you really want a 1080p GPU, there are so many options on the market already that cost way less and will give you a solid experience that I think it's a lot more interesting to see if the 5600 XT can provide solid frame rates at 1440p. And of course, I wanted to overclock it and see how close it can get to the 5700. But nonetheless, for those who are indeed looking for the ultimate 1080p GPU and don't want to go to the secondhand market to get, for instance, a NAR9 390 or 290X or GTX 970 or GTX 1060 or an RX 480 or one of the many, many options out there for 1080p, here's a chart with 1080p results for the 5600 XT with ultra settings. These results are using a last minute release of a performance BIOS that Asus provided one day before this review goes live. And I'll talk in more detail about this Asus model in a second that AMD was kind enough to provide for this review. With this new BIOS, I saw about an 8 to 10% increase in performance. So if you do get this GPU, make sure to download the BIOS update tool from the Asus website as the difference is significant. Let me make that very clear. Out of the box with the stock BIOS, you will get 10% less performance than what you are seeing here. So with all the settings turned to max, the 5600 XT performs well over 90 frames per second in all of these AAA titles at 1080p. The Witcher 3 has seen a surge in popularity recently thanks to the Netflix show, which is a great thing because it's a great game that many people missed. So I decided to include it in this chart and with the 5600 XT you get 100 FPS average with every setting maxed out, except for how it works of course. So toss a coin to Cortex O Valley of Plenty by joining my Patreon, link in the description. So as you can see, in my opinion the 5600 XT is a bit overkill for 1080p. In most games I can't tell the difference between ultra settings and high settings, so I think if you need a GPU for 1080p gaming you don't need to spend $279 which is what the 5600 XT costs. There are lots of options out there, especially in the used market, that can play all of these games above 60 FPS by lowering a few settings. But some people do like to just be able to crank every setting up to the max, even if it means staying at a lower resolution, so if that's you, the 5600 XT won't disappoint at 1080p, obviously. Now what might surprise you is how well the 5600 XT performs at 1440p. For these tests, I'll be comparing the 5600 XT to the NVIDIA equivalents in the same price range, but I'll also include the RTX 2060, which recently came down in price, supposedly to $300, but I can't find one below $320 at the time of making this video. I'll also include the RX 5700, which you can find for as little as $330, so $50 more than the 5600 XT. Starting with Battlefield 5 at 1440p Ultra using DX11, the 5600 XT gets off to a great start, not only obliterating the similarly priced 1660 Ti, but even beating the more expensive RTX 2060. That's of course with the new performance BIOS that Asus provided, as with the rest of the benchmarks that you're about to see. Keep that in mind. It's also only 14% slower than the 5700, which costs $50 more. So not a bad start for the 5600 XT at 1440p. Next we have Borderlands 3 and here I dropped the settings to medium because honestly in this game all the visual presets look exactly the same to me. Using the DX12 
of API, the 5600 XT gets 88 FPS average, again beating the similarly priced 1660 Ti by a wide margin and matching the more expensive RTX 2060. This time the 5700 is 22% faster than the 5600 XT, which is a significant difference in this title. In Far Cry New Dawn we get similar results at 1440p Ultra with the 5600 XT getting 85 FPS average, beating the 1660 Ti by 14 frames on average, even though they cost roughly the same, depending on the model of course. And again, it's basically matching the more expensive RTX 2060, just 2 frames behind which is within margin of error. The 5700 is 15% faster than the 5600 XT in this game. In Metro Exodus, like we saw earlier with Battlefield 5, the 5600 XT manages to come out slightly ahead of the RTX 2060 by 4 frames on average, although the 1% lows drop a bit lower on the 5600 than they do on the 2060. So again, not a good look for the more expensive RTX 2060. The 1660 Ti, which AMD positions as the direct competitor to the 5600 XT, is a whopping 16 frames behind on average, while the 5700 is 15% faster than the 5600 XT in this title. For Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1440p, I set the graphics bar to 3 notches. This gives decent quality visuals without sacrificing performance and makes it easier to benchmark consistently. So I'll call this setting medium, and I'm using the Vulkan API here. The 5600 XT got a solid 74 FPS average, again beating the competing 1660 Ti by close to 10 frames on average, but this time falling quite a bit short of the 2060. Interestingly, this is the one game where I saw no difference between the original BIOS that came with the GPU and the new performance BIOS that Asus provided. Note that there's a weird stutter during the in-game benchmark that happens every single time with every GPU, which is why the 1% lows look all over the place here, sometimes dropping down to 23 FPS with some GPUs. In actual gameplay, the difference won't be this big, so don't read too much into these minimums. Also, there are some visual quality guides out there, including an excellent one by Hardware Unbox, which you could use to get an even better visual quality while staying above 60 FPS at 1440p, especially considering we're getting mid 70s here with the 5600 XT in what can be a very demanding game. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, again the 5600 XT manages to beat the RTX 2060 by being 7 frames ahead on average at 69 versus 62 on the 2060, which is a significant gain over the pricier card. And this is at 1440p high with the X12. So it's not ultra, but it's still with high visual fidelity. And again, the 5600 XT is capable of handling the game at over 60 FPS with the occasional drop down to the mid 50s. I'm sure you could fiddle with the settings and get even higher frame rates, but for the sake of consistency, I think this paints a good picture of why I think the 5600 XT is a solid 1440p GPU. The 5700 is only 7% faster in this game, which is a bit surprising. And finally, before we get to the overclocking results, I decided to include a game that not a lot of people seem to benchmark, but that I think has some nice visuals and is pretty fun to play, and that's Greedfall. The game is a bit sparse when it comes to graphics settings, but it does include this super high-tech feature called Cloth's Physic, <laughs> pushing all the settings to as high as they could go at 1440p. The 5600 XT did struggle to get to 60 FPS, getting 58 FPS on average, while the 2060 does just about get there. Interestingly, the 5700 also didn't do that well in this title, so perhaps this just isn't well optimized for AMD hardware. The game is running on a custom engine called Silk Engine, which is developed in-house by the game's creators. Anyway, the 5600 XT is 9 frames ahead of the similarly priced 1660 Ti, and with some adjustments you can play the game at well over 60 FPS without really noticing much difference in visual quality. Now when it comes to overclocking, before the new vBIOS that Asus provided, the overclocks were actually pretty decent, but with the new BIOS the difference isn't that noticeable. To overclock, open the Radeon software, go to the Performance tab, click Tuning and accept a user agreement that will pop up. Then in Tuning Controls select Manual, set the GPU tuning to Enabled and slide the max frequency to as high as it will go. Enable Fan Tuning and 
set fan speed to 100, enable power tuning and again move the power limit slider to the max. And finally enable VRAM tuning and advanced control. And for this particular GPU I found the stable frequency to be 1650 MHz. Other models might go higher but for me these settings were rock solid, completely stable. Unfortunately I didn't have much time to do more refined tuning to these settings. So looking at just a few overclocking results, in Battlefield 5 we see a small increase from 86 to 89 FPS, so that's a meager 3% uplift in this game. If you are using the stock bias and you overclock like I did here, you will obviously see a much higher difference as your stock results will be about 10% lower. Here the stock results with the performance bias are already close to the overclocking potential, so the difference is minimal. In Borderlands 3 we see again a small increase from 88 to 91 FPS average, which is about 3.5% more performance. Again, nothing earth shattering. In Metro Exodus, we see a more reasonable jump from 66 FPS to 70 FPS, which is a 6% increase. It also increased the minimum, so definitely worth overclocking in this case. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the overclocking gains were very solid, with 9.5% more performance, putting the 5600 XT on par with the RTX 2060 now, so definitely worth the very quick and easy overclock that you saw me doing earlier, and some models might go even higher. And finally in Greedfall we see the only instance where the 5600 XT overclock comes close to matching its bigger brother, the 5700, just two frames shy of it. But considering this is just a 3% performance increase with the overclock, it's not exactly spectacular. And like I said earlier, this engine doesn't really seem optimized to take advantage of the Nive based GPUs. As far as thermals and power consumption are concerned, out of the box the Asus Tough Gaming 5600 XT stays at 47 degrees Celsius idle and maxes at 60 degrees Celsius under full load, at which point the GPU clock stays at a consistent 1572 MHz while drawing 130 watts. When you overclock it with the stock BIOS, so that's the bias that you get out of the box when you buy the GPU, the temperatures stay locked at 60 degrees Celsius under full load and the clocks boost up to 1700 MHz, drawing 163 watts. However, things change with this new performance BIOS. The idle temperature stays roughly the same at 45 degrees Celsius, but the temperatures under load now can go over that 60 degrees Celsius ceiling that was in place with the stock BIOS, capping up at 64 degrees Celsius. The stock clocks with this new BIOS stay consistent under full load at 1705 MHz while drawing 157 watts. When you overclock with the exact same overclock but with this new BIOS, the temperature goes up to 67 degrees Celsius with the clocks hovering consistently, so without fluctuations, at 1745 MHz and now drawing 171 watts. So what I think happened here with this whole last minute BIOS drama is that once Nvidia decided to drop the price of the RTX 2060 to anywhere between 300 and 320 dollars. Again, the cheapest I could find was 320 dollars. But anyway, AMD decided to provide this new bias to us reviewers so that we would show what are essentially slightly overclocked results. I did consider not including the results from this new bias because of the time constraints, but admittedly, it is very simple to update it. It's a one click type of process with a tool that Asus provides. It's worth stressing this point. Be aware that the GPUs that you buy off the shelf will have about 10% less performance of what you see in my tests if you don't update to the performance bias. And I have a feeling that many of the less informed buyers might just glance at benchmark results and not be aware of the bias change that was required to get them. As for the Asus Tough Gaming, it comes with a seriously impressive cooler for what is essentially a mid-range GPU. It has that hybrid system where the three fans only come on when needed, and sometimes even only one fan will start spinning. It's absolutely quiet, even under full load. The build quality is excellent, and the small RGB strip that's on the top of the shroud is nice and subtle. I'm not a big fan of over-the-top RGB blank, so I approve of the stealthy look of this model. It also comes with a metal backplate, which does help with heat dissipation. There's no DVI connector, you only get three DisplayPort and one HDMI 
2.0b. Unfortunately, GPUs still don't have HDMI 2.1 support. Hopefully, the next generation of GPUs corrects that. And it only has one 8-pin power input, which I'm guessing is by design so that people don't unlock the 5600 XT and turn it into a 5700. I'm sure people will still try. So what are my thoughts on this GPU? From a pure hardware perspective, at $279, the 5600 XT is a really great option for 1440p gaming and renders the RTX 2060 completely unbuyable at the $320 that I'm seeing it going for. Even if the 2060 does start popping up at $299, it still loses to the 5600 XT in some of the games that I tested, so it's probably not worth the extra $20. The cheapest 1660 Ti's are around $270 to $280 and get destroyed by the 5600 XT which costs the same. I don't think Nvidia cares too much as they rarely bring prices down, but as it stands, the 1660 Ti especially makes no sense compared to the 5600 XT. It's an inferior product for the same price, it's as simple as that. Hopefully this forces Nvidia to drop the prices on those lower tier GPUs. I don't agree with AMD's positioning of the 5600 XT as the ultimate 1080p gaming GPU, because like I said in the beginning of the video, there are so many options for 1080p, and if you really need high frame rates for competitive shooters, you can always adjust the settings, because let's be honest, you'll be hard pressed to tell the difference between an ultra preset and a high preset in the vast majority of cases. To me, just like the 5700 XT is an entry point to 4K gaming, the 5700 600 XT is, I guess, even more than just an entry point, it's a solid 1440p gaming GPU for AAA titles, and at $279, it's priced reasonably considering the current pricing context of GPUs. However, in the last 6 months, AMD's drivers have been very poor when it comes to stability. A lot of people were having black screen issues, crashes, and even while testing this 5600 XT, I had a weird issue where that was stuttering when capturing gameplay with Relief. After receiving a torrent of messages from patrons and followers regarding these issues over the last few months, I did provide AMD with a report of all these bugs, including some videos of the black screen issues people are having, and AMD assures me they will be releasing a new driver that addresses most of these problems. While I am happy to see AMD putting the effort into these fixes, I cannot help but warn you guys that if you buy the 5600XT, or any AMD GPU right now, there's some chance that you will encounter some instability with the drivers. I really like the 5600 XT, I like the 5700 which is a tweaker's dream, and I think the 5700 XT is great value for what it is. But what's the point of having these great GPUs if the drivers provide users with a bad experience? So AMD, please use that money that's coming from all those Ryzen sales and hire more software guys to work on your GPU drivers. This review was made possible by my awesome patrons. Consider supporting my channel and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server where you can discuss technology trends with myself and other welcoming enthusiasts. So join my Patreon today. Thanks for watching and until the next one.